Welcome, welcome, ye weary wanderers of the automotive world wide web to a tale of woe and want, of trial and tribulation, of sacrifice and suffering. I am Ian. This is Dale. And here is our story. Sorry if that comes off as a bit dramatic. I know. But this is really my only outlet for the trauma that was visited upon myself, my family, and upon Dale at the 10th annual Lake Garnett Grand Prix Revival in the year of our Lord, 2023. If you've been following along, you've seen me update this 1972 Celica with a new clutch, new suspension, new brakes, even a Ford 88 rear end, and a handful of other trick parts like this sweet lip spoiler down here at great expense of time and money. And that's all been in the name of getting the most out of this 50-year-old chassis and driveline. Now, left to my own schedule, I would never get to half of the things that I've done for this build. Hell, the previous 1973 Celica that I had followed me around for 10 years, and I didn't do half of what I've done to this car, to that shell. Granted, Dorothy the 73 Celica was in bare metal, and that made it harder to see the, you know, guiding light at the end of the tunnel, but I digress. Luckily for my procrastination, there's a drop-dead date on the calendar every year that I know I have to be ready for. It's simple. I am to get my vintage car ready to run by the second weekend in October. Big red X's on the calendar. Can't miss them. I can't miss the date because I can't miss the event. It's my World Series, my Super Bowl, and my Concours d'Elegance, all rolled up into one. I can only be speaking, of course, of the Lake Garnett Grand Prix Revival, because I already said the name once, so why wouldn't, why wouldn't I be speaking of it? This three-day car show and track event harkens back to the heyday of sports car racing in America. It's run on a track where names like Shelby and Gurney and Miles were regularly seen on the program and on the podium. The organizers of the LGGPR want people to come and experience what it was like to go to the races at the lake back in the day, but have opened up the track to more than just those with a racing license. You, me, everybody, we can all bring our mechanical pride and joy to Garnett and break dive our way into flat iron corner. We can chug a chug our way across the dam and we can four wheel drift through mule shoe. Hmm. Happy place. With classes for cruising at just 60 miles per hour, all the way up to exhibition race cars going flat out, everyone has a place on the track at the Revival. As I said before, 2023 marked the 10th running of the Revival. It was my seventh year attending the event and my sixth year on track. So my procrastination couldn't possibly win out over those glaring dates on the calendar. Dale had to return for his second year at the autocross and his first shot at the 80 mile per hour class. So we crammed, we slammed, we just plain got shit done. And we were full on ready when the weekend finally rolled around. My crew of four and I loaded up all the necessities and headed south from Kansas City on Friday the 13th. Sound ominous? Just wait. We arrived for the Friday night check-in and wandered through all of the memorabilia set out by the staff to commemorate the 10th running of the event. Right away, the nostalgia hits you right smack in the face. This event means more than just shiny cars and revving engines. Once checked in and laden with our t-shirts and other swag, we wandered back out to take Dale up to his parking spot for the weekend. This was supposed to be a quick drop and go to get Dale off the trailer, get the trailer off the truck, and make the trek 30 minutes north to our Airbnb. The thought being that Dale would be on the ground and ready to roll Saturday morning for the autocross at the Garnett Municipal Airport. Well, this is where the weekend goes straight sideways. I'm back in the car off the trailer, just clearing over the hump of the dovetail, and I hear a crunch. 
So I do what any good car guy does, and I pull it back forward and take another run at it. Another crunch. Looking back, that may as well have been my spirit breaking in two. The coupler between the janky aftermarket header and the rest of the exhaust got caught on the dovetail. So we figured out what combination of trailer jacking and rear tire management we needed to do to get Dale off of the trailer, and we began to assess the damage in the dark on Friday the 13th. It was clear enough to us that the exhaust would absolutely not go back together in the manner in which it came apart. The header and down tubes seemed to be bent downwards, and the tube was essentially in the dirt. So we quickly threw together a plan to go and buy some parts to see if we could put the thing back together. We found an open O'Reilly, we bought a flex tube and some other parts to make a side exhaust, and you know, just maybe, maybe we can make it cooler in the process? No. After an hour of driving and dropping some of the crew off at the Knight's homestead, we began to do our hacking. We opted for the side pipe first, of course, because we are Americans, and we wanted it to be loud and proud. But that didn't really work because, again, it was all in the dirt. Everything was already slanted down towards the dirt. So it wouldn't have only just been digging up the asphalt, but it would have also given me a ripping headache. With no way to bend the header back to its original position, I, I hatched a really, really dumb plan. Well, here's a video I don't want to be making. The time is now 11.54, uh, six minutes away from midnight on Friday the 13th, Friday, October 13th, 2023. I should be snug a bug in my bed at the Airbnb in Ottawa. Uh, instead, I'm driving my truck back to Kansas City to retrieve parts for Dale. Uh, uh, there's police up here. Let me turn this off for a second. So, I'm headed back to Kansas City uh, here late at night to grab uh, a stock exhaust manifold and B-pipe that my buddy Charlie sent to me long, long ago um, that I was going to put on the car because I thought the header was kind of crap anyway. Um, ended up not doing that, but now I have to. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to grab the manifold. I'm going to get some sleep. I'm going to head back early in the morning. I'm going to pick up the family in Ottawa and head out to the track at Garnett. Um, I'm not going to be able to do autocross this year. I'm going to have to spend that time taking off the carb and take manifold and the exhaust manifold and swapping on a new exhaust manifold and then hopefully making the exhaust work on the car so I can run on Sunday. Um, maybe we'll make it to the car show in the afternoon. Um, I know the family will. Uh, maybe I won't. No. We'll see what happens, but uh, that's the plan for right now. I'm going to grab the... Uh, the, uh, going to grab the stock manifold and uh, get some sleep and then be on my way back. Let's see here. Ooh, good God. Mm -hmm. If I were a nasty old... Aha! That's where I'd be. Where are the gaskets? Any pipe? Probably the heaviest exhaust manifold known to man. Ta-da! Gasket acquired. Hmm. Hmm. Not what I need. Hmm. Maybe? Let's go look. Well, turns out that I've got now the, you know, the main manifolds gasket and the carb to the intake manifold gasket, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you buy a exhaust manifold gasket kit. One would assume that it would come with all of the man the gaskets to do the exhaust manifold, but it did not come with this one. So now what? You saw the mess. You've seen it. You've seen all the mess. I searched here, I searched here, I searched in here, I searched over there. I searched over there in that box right there. I searched on that cabinet there. I searched on that one back there. I finally came back in here and right in that box there where you see that radiator, 
Master cylinder, headlights. Look at it, look at it. I found the gasket that I need to make this work. Look at it. <laughs> All we're lacking is nuts now. Story of my life. Well, there's nothing quite like a little 2 a.m. thread cutting. You know what I mean? Get your thread cutting going at 2 a.m. without a vice. To don't you don't need a vice. Don't let people don't let people fool you into thinking that you need to do things with proper tools. As if all that wasn't enough for a Friday the 13th. As I was passed out getting my four-ish hours of sleep for the night, someone decided they would rifle through my truck. Here he is, being a total dick. Look at him, finding nothing but wadded up napkins and sunscreen. Idiot. On Saturday, I returned to the crew before the rooster crowed and rallied the troops to get back to the lake. We worked like mad to swap out the headers for the stock manifold. The thought being that if I could get this accomplished quick enough, then we'd still have time to roll over to the autocross and dole out some vintage Toyota justice upon the newer vehicles that were present. But there were issues. Okay, so situation report. The stock intake, the stock exhaust manifold has this big old hole in it. And it's meant to meet up to the bottom of the intake manifold right here and, you know, heat up your carburetor, I guess. Um, problem being, uh, there's twofold. Number one, you know, we kind of have to hold this piece down to that piece uh, in order for it to not leak. There's bolt holes there and then there's holes in this uh, that you one would assume that you could slip a bolt past. And I was like, oh, there's just some screws in here. I'll take those out and then I'll be able to take this off and then I'll be able to get the bolt head uh, pass through there because you know a bolt head looks like this right and it's got to slip past this spot but it doesn't so I thought I'll take those out and I'll be able to take that off and well I did that and I found this which is one two three four bolts that have previously been ground off that there's no way to remove them so I can't get this spacer off so we're on to whatever's next. Another dumb plan to, to, we just keep getting foiled at every turn here. After several trips to the local Garnett Napa Auto Parts, shout out to those folks for always having nearly everything that I need whenever I break stupid stuff when I go to Garnett. They know me now. And the local hardware store as well. Uh, between those two, we were able to cobble together enough hardware and gasket material to kind of glue the manifold back on, sort of. He's still here. He's not down there at the track. And he's not, you know, that way somewhere at the car show. He's still right here because he won't start. We've mishmashed together a whole, there's a whole pile of exhaust gasket material right there. Trying to take up space because we couldn't put bolts down through here to actually bolt it down. And then I stripped threads on that stud and then there's another stud that doesn't have a bolt on it so it's barely bolted down i'm sure it's gonna leak like a pig but I, at this point i just want to get it back on the trailer so i'm um, hoping that it'll run long enough to get it on the trailer but it won't start at the moment so we fiddled and fettled for another hour or so and kind folks from all over kept coming by to help us try to troubleshoot at this point we're going down the normal path of does it have fuel does it have spark you know just how you figure out how to get a car running both fuel and spark were good enough Though we did find a potential wire shorting out inside the distributor. That couldn't have been helping things, so we patched that up. After all was said and done, the issue had to boil down to an intake manifold leak. Likely right around where I stripped those studs and couldn't get any purchase for that to cinch down. So I came up with an all-new strategy for Sunday. It's Sunday, Lake Garnett Grand Prix Revival. Everyone's in paddock, getting ready to go. I'm walking to my car to get ready to go in uh, group C2. Group one, or, I'm sorry, B2. B2. Right right funny looking Zilliqa.
I don't want to spin this car. I'm not going to spin this car. We're going to have it in, I might launch it in second. I mean, I'm going to be going real slow. I'm at the back of the pack in my group. And uh, I think that's where I'm probably going to stay. I'll just stay behind some folks unless they want to give me a point by. But I'm not confident enough in the tires to really let it have it. So we're going to see what happens. So that was a wild ride. I'd driven this car. We call it Cujo before. Shout out to Al Hermans for letting me drive Cujo. But this time was different. Uh, I'd driven it autocross. I didn't know what to expect with the road course. But what I found was pretty much immediately the, the alignment was so far off that it was dragging the car all over the road. The car was just driving itself. I pulled in after my first lap because the car was just too dangerous for me. And then Al found that out for himself when he went out in the car in his group and he did the exact same thing, just pulled in right after his first lap. So I apologize to Al once again for my terrible luck rubbing off onto Cujo. I won't let it happen again. I cannot promise that. Don't let me in your car. For the afternoon, I was offered a much tamer ride in an NC Miata by my buddy Matt. I say tamer because its alignment was awesome, but it was in no way boring. Oh, I love a Miata. An NC Miata honestly packs some punch that I did not expect. And the really good tires helped me hold that grip in mule shoe like I wish Dale could. Maybe he will someday. Oh, speaking of mule shoe, it and a lot of the other spots on the track were really rough this year. And the good folks at uh, the LG GPR have started a fund with the city to allow citizens to fund the repairs of the track so we the concerned racing community can go and make a donation to help fund repairs of the track and you got to get on this if you love lake garnett even if you don't if you just love vintage auto racing you plan on going to lake garnett go throw in five bucks or ten bucks help us repair this road i mean i'm not going to go out there and do it i would if they asked me to though but you know the the road around the lake needs some serious repair and you can find out how you can give at garnettcommunityfoundation.org slash donate. And that URL should be, you know, on the screen somewhere right now. And then also, you know, at the bottom down in the description. So click it, donate, help us make the track better. Because Mule Shoe whew, it had a hell of a dip in it. We want to just level that out a little bit because it's still fun. It actually makes it a little more fun, but it needs to be a little less dangerous so everybody can enjoy their time. So having put a huge smile on my face, and after thanking Matt profusely for the usage of his Miata, the crew and I had one final mission, to get Dale back up on the trailer so we could bring his butt home. Sadly, there isn't any video of this effort. The thought of it kind of brings a tear to my eye, so I really wish there was some sort of documentation of it. But we had an army of people follow us up the hill from Paddock to help us push the car onto the trailer. The car got up there. We had to do some tomfoolery with some jacks. to give it. Every, man, everybody pitched in to help us get Dale back on the trailer. And I want to thank each and every one of you. If I could, I'd do it by name. I know Doug was there and Matt was there. And yeah, I'm bad with names, y'all. Oh, Blake was there. Why can't I think of... Man, I know people buy their cars. He has a 356A. It's, it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful Porsche 356. All right, next time I'll be better prepared. I'm going to put his name in now. His name is... Sean, sorry, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I knew it all along. I mean, I, I don't know who else was there, but if you were there, uh, the Fiat guys, those Fiat guys that helped it, let us borrow a, uh, uh, the chop saw. And I mean, like there's so many people that pitched in uh, and helped us out uh, over the weekend uh, to, to get Dale in one place or the other. So thanks to all of you. And I wouldn't expect anything else out of folks at Garnett. It's such a fantastic event and everybody's there just trying to do the same thing. Everybody wants to see your car out on track. If you brought it there for some reason, it's not getting out there. Everybody's sad. They're like, oh my gosh, why didn't it make it out on track? Because we all know what a big deal it is to the person who brought their car. So, you know, never fear. Next year, Dale will be on the track. And if you need help, find me, right? Because I'm going to help you out and get you on track too. And maybe you'll also have to help me. So I've said it before. I will say it again and again and again. As long as I draw breath, be it cold or not, and I am physically able, I will never miss the Lake Garnett Grand Prix revival. You will see me there. Guaranteed. Count on it. What Dale won't miss, however, is that terrible parking spot next to the gravel road uh, that he got completely covered in dust. So we had to take him by for a wash. 
uh, on the way out of town because he was just absolutely coated. We were all coated in gravel too. And uh, that's, that's the one out of all the bad things that happened. I was like, this is, this was the dumbest thing that we did was park this thing right next to the gravel road. So not doing that next year, but still want to be at the top of that hill, but we'll see where we end up. So what about next year? <laughs> I mean, you don't have to ask at this point, obviously we're going to be back. Dale will be there. But this time, he'll be packing the dual overhead cam power of the legendary Toyota 18RG. Sporting dual Makuni side draft carburetors and making the most beautiful of noises. That is, once we safely get him off the trailer. Actually, it might come to pass that a completely different vintage Toyota sports car rides on the trailer to Garnett. And Dale can just follow along. For the killer Corolla lurks in the shadows, silently awaiting its return to autocross glory. And Garnett may just be the perfect place for its comeback. Time will tell. So stay tuned. Subscribe to OIO Racing here on the YouTube. Join us over on Facebook and the Instagram. and uh, Oh, shorts. We got shorts now, too. So watch those shorts and give them a like and whatnot. You really have no idea how much those actually matter. I wish they didn't, but they do. So I'll keep making them. Maybe making fun of them, too, at the same time. And yeah, I mean, we're doing it all now, you know? No no stone unturned. No, no potential pathway to monetization unturned. We are going to make money with these dumb videos come hell or high water. Oh, there you are, Killer Corolla. I've, I found you. I found you. Oh, God. That head. I got to do something about this.